It's Mishek Keen and Lynchig. I'm on EAS coming to my father, August Kuhn Dillamney. The worst dress sense I'd say would have to be Seamus Hickey. He arrived in a pair of boots there today and a yellow pair and he was going around as if they were <laughs> Daffy Duck kind of shoes, but no, he's kind of a weirdo style since when it comes to boots, but there's a few lads there, Pat Ryan would arrive on with an old wife beat or something crazy, but there's a few lads. The fashion kind of all over the place at the moment. <laughs> I don't know, Declan Hannon now, when he's out, he's kind of doing all weird old thing. He'd have the hands up in the air and he'd kind of be gliding every sort of way, but he thinks he's great. When we're looking at him, we're kind of moving away, so we're not with him, like. <laughs> no. Larry Hennessy is an old slick man now. He's the hair all kind of gelled back. He looks well, he's in good condition, like, so he's kind of a man. He, although he's in a big relationship, like, he's still, I'd say, the few ladies are looking at him. That's Barry Phil. <laughs> um, I think called Bates Motel now, you probably never heard of it. It's a weird old series. I remember one day I was sitting down, I was doing that, like, you know, the college life, kind of lounging around. I went down, I watched the thing, Bates Motel, and was started watching the first and second episode and got into it, and sure, I ended up watching about 30 episodes there straight through in the last two days, like. <laughs> Uh, we got off to a good start against Wexford. You know, it was Anne and Limerick, and lucky enough we got up, we got up a high score. Like, and went on then to play Kerry, who put it up to us in, you know, in the second half there. It was kind of looking bleak, but thankfully we got over it. Then beat Offaly and beat Leash the end of the day. But obviously, this weekend is the big one against Clare. And you know, two teams there looking to get up out of Division 1B, and it's time will tell. Does playing in the second tier give you the opportunity to experiment and blood new talent or is it something that hinders you later in the year as you prepare for championship? It does give managers the opportunity to put in new lads. You see it this year with a lot of the 21s team from Nashville being brought in. I'd say there's the bones of 15 lads and they've all been given runs in the league. But still though you have to keep on top of things. You still have to go out and put in a massive performance because there's no easy game really. So you're up against teams there that are fighting and want to perform. We've seen some great games in Division 1A, almost a championship pace. How have you found the pace in Division 1B, let's say compared to the Munster Championship? Well, there's no point saying it's not as high tempo or anything like that, but there is a bit of a difference there with Championship Ireland. Like, you know, any time you play a league game, it's always going to be either slow and dogged, and the weather as well isn't always the greatest when you're playing league hurling compared to Championship. But 1B hurling, there's no point saying it's easy or it's... It's easy to get out of one B, it's not, it's every man for himself down there and it's as dogged as can be. Uh, it's massive really, you know, as you said, six years down there, like, it doesn't benefit any team really when you're trying to get up and play, you're on to play against the best teams. Like, in Waterford last year, they got up out of one B, ended up winning the league and were unlucky to get to an all Ireland final. So, we'd be looking to get up out of this division and I suppose Clare will be looking for the exact same. Look, both of us are going down with the same intention to come away and get out of Division 1B, but you know, with both teams of panel players that are capable of doing it, so it's a matter of going out and the best team win. <laughs>